Hey everyone, how you doing? So over the past few months, I've been pondering the idea of doing cinematic analysis reviews. At first, I thought the idea was pointless because there are already a countless amount of movie reviews out there, but I kept finding myself really invested in films and the circumstances around them. So I let the idea stew a little longer because I wanted to find the right film, one that was decent and obscure enough to garner the first installment, and I think I did. So this is the Bad Lieutenant Cinematic Analysis Review. The Bad Lieutenant, starring Harvey Keitel, is an, is a, is an NC-17 1992 independent film. It focuses on a corrupt New York City police lieutenant who's simply referred to as LT. The lieutenant lies, steals, and does drugs such as cocaine and heroin. But when a young nun is raped in the sanctity of her own church, the lieutenant still lies, steals, and does drugs. The film is a bleak character study. It follows the lieutenant as he tries to redeem himself before it's too late. And by the end, it might as well be. So let me tell you a bit about this movie. So the LT is introduced as a father. His twin sons miss the bus, and he has to drive them to school. So he drops them off, watches them as they cross the street, and when he's certain they won't return, He's this is the lieutenant's true introduction. Although he's a police officer, he's everything a guy with a badge shouldn't be. The very next scene, he goes to a crime investigation and stares at a dead girl's breast. But that's not all. He's the go-to guy for baseball gambling. I think that's what it is. Is it betting or gambling? Not only is he the guy that the other cops go to for advice, but he's also the guy that puts in their bets. So within this scene, he discusses with his buddies to whether or not put the bets on the Mets or the Dodgers. Take the five, put it on the Mets. Say like it's a fucking death sentence, it's a smart bet. I think it is a fucking death sentence. Immediately afterwards, LT enters his buddy's bets and places his own, not on the Mets, but the Dodgers. This exemplifies how selfish he is by disregarding others and using them to increase this, his winnings on the next game. Now the reason why I'm going on about the bets so much is because they play a big factor in the lieutenant's story. By the end, he eventually owes $120,000 because he keeps going double or nothing on the Dodgers. And we, we find out pretty early on that the Dodgers can't play for shit. Now, 11-3. Betting on the Mets may seem like a death sentence, but the real death sentence is betting on the Dodgers. So the main conflict occurs about 20 minutes into the movie. The rape scene between the nun and two guys occurs as if it's a dream. Interestingly enough, this plot point is based on a true event. Bo Deedle, one of the detectives who broke the case, actually plays a role in this movie. He's right there. They took the fucking chalice. It's important to know that Bad Lieutenant isn't based on him. Now let me tell you a bit about the soundtrack. The most notable song that appears in Bad Lieutenant is a song called Pledging My Love by Johnny Ace. It's a happy song, but yet it somehow manages to feel somewhat haunting. It fits perfectly with the film's gloomy atmosphere. Another song that was originally featured in the film is Signifying Rapper by Schooly D. Now this piece apparently appeared four times within the movie, one being during the initial nun scene. The reason why it was pulled from Bad Lieutenant is not because of the film itself, but the song itself. The problem with the song is that it sounds very much like another song. Can you guess which one? That's right, it's Led Zeppelin's Cashmere. In result, Schooly D was sued by Led Zeppelin and it was omitted from the film. And to be honest, I can't see a nun being brutal. I can't see anybody being brutalized to Cashmere. Here's something interesting. There are actually two separate cuts of Bad Lieutenant. The original is supposed to be the NC-17 version, but in the 1990s, video rental stores such as Blockbuster were essential, and they played a pivotal role in the film's distribution. Apparently, rated R movies had an easier time appearing on shelves, so then the alternate watered-down Bad Lieutenant was born. This cut's not very different from the original, it just has a, a few of the more graphic scenes cut down. 
There's really only one reason to watch it opposed to the other. Early in the film, the lieutenant goes to his mistress's house. Her name's Ariane. In the NC-17 version, there's little to no dialogue and a whole lot of full frontal nudity. In the R version, LT comes in and there's a whole conversation between him, Ariane, and Ariane's girlfriend, according to the script, Bo Tay. But if you watch both scenes, they're completely different. One ends in a happy dance between the three and LT tries to drink from a bottle. The other ends in a full frontal medium shot of Kaitel. The exclusion of the dialogue in this scene uh, is definitely inferior to the R. Besides that, I prefer the NC-17 cut. It's the only way you're gonna get the bad lieutenant experience. Speaking of the experience, it is an experience. The first time I watched it, I, I felt like I was gonna get in trouble. I felt like I did something bad. Everything just feels so intimate until the end of the film where LT is in full close-up, bawling, and then he just walks off into the distance. There are plenty of things that happen before and after here, but unlike my literary analysis review series, I'm going to not spoil as much as I normally would. Harvey Keitel's performance is superb. There's a scene later in the movie where he puts everything on the line, and you have no choice but to feel sympathetic for his character. There's a lot of religious imagery in this film, so that might or might not be your jam. The majority of it is pretty blatant, like the character who gives the lieutenant a box full of enough cash to bail him out of his gambling debt is called JC. Now in the script, the box is also referred to as the lieutenant's salvation. So altogether, the character JC gives salvation to the lieutenant. Either way, I enjoy this film. I think it's really unique for a New York crime drama uh, set in New York. Since it's early 90s, it manages to blend both the feel of 80s and 90s cinema. And if this was a YouTube channel, I would subscribe. Thanks for watching. Oops.